We have Takajo versus Uriate. Okay, let's see if we can get a, a more attractive uh, contest out of um, Uriate. Maybe Takajo's style will suit him and we'll get something um, to really uh, write home about. Takajo already, uh, Uriate already sprawling out there. Comes in with it, a bit of a Sayanage. Takajo try to work some Neiwaza, Uriate. Gotta, gotta think that Takajo has got to be able to get inside Uriate at the same time try to avoid that over the top grip that Uriate is well known for. Here Uriate just sprawls again. I'm thinking perhaps Takajo's best bet would be something like a Sanage attack or a counter or Neiwaza. Here it almost looked like he there's some kind of makikomi, you try to tie up the arm and then throw. A bit atypical for a Japanese competitor. And Oriate was really pursuing Takajo there. I like his movement, uh, Takaja. There's just something that uh, suggests that he's comfortable on his feet, moves well. I don't know whether it's by, by design or not, but Uriate has not been able to come over the top, or he hasn't attempted that yet. I can't see that he would change his usual tactics, so Tak Takaja must be doing something. La Ross has just um, defeated Fukuoka Masaki of Japan down on mat number three by Ippon. I'm not going to um, hazard a guess as to what the Ippon may have been. I'll just say it was by Ippon. Sounds like someone else is hedging his bets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we know the outcome. La Ross over Fukuoka by Ippon. Well, with Two minutes burned off the clock. No score yet in this match. We'll um, let you know uh, exactly what time we're, we're going to be back in a, in a moment because we've got the opening ceremony um, to come and then the, uh, the semi-final matches and I'll let you know exactly what time that uh, that starts that was very interesting is actually Takajo who actually went over the top of Uriate and grabbed the grabbed the belt and here Uriate is working on some sort of Neiwaza position to try to drag Takajo back into the playing area so there's got to be, I, I've been trying to key in here, there's got to be a reason why Uriate has not been able to get that deep, deep grip. You can see there he's trying to bend his elbow in there and Takajo is sort of stymieing that. So, so far we haven't seen the fruits of his efforts, but Takajo is effectively defended himself against Oriate's usual tactics. Let's see, maybe we try to work a little Neiwaza, but call for Mate. There we go. That was the first time I saw Oriate try to go over the top, and it missed. And Takajo again came in, kind of blocked out the effort. Less than a minute and a half left. Uriati turns in. 
Okay, Joe tries to tie up his arm there with, again with his heel. Doesn't get it. There's a call for Mate. Again, Takajo trying to negate. Came in for the throw at the same time. He was trying to negate Oriate's move. And you can hear some urgent Spanish in the background cheering <laughs> on Oriate. <laughs> Perhaps giving him a bit of coaching. And with 41 seconds left, referee calls Mate. Oops, <laughs> that was a bit of a whack to the face that Uriati took earlier on. That was a pretty good turn in there. Looked to go left-sided there, didn't he? I got to give Takajo credit for the defense, but I'm still waiting for a big, that was a big offensive move. Ooh. Oh, I thought he was off the Tommy, but no. And there we go. Okochi. So we were waiting for Takajo's offensive move when we got it. Very nice, crisp. Kochi got it. And that will take care of